Well, today we are working on my workshop itself. Now, as much as the workshop is just a tool to build the cars, and that's really what the priority is, I really enjoy doing these workshop projects, making the space more efficient, because the more efficient and better set up the workshop is, the easier it is to build the cars and keep up with all these projects and keep everything organized and moving along. And we have a lot of projects on the chopping block coming down the pipeline that we're gonna need to be working on. And we don't really have the space to spread everything out like I'd want to, to keep everything organized. So we are finally gonna be diving into really the biggest projects left and maximizing the workshop here. So we've already done a lot. We started out here when I bought the house with a uh, half enclosed half carport type building it was an older building built in 98 and it needed some work and we tried to go through the permit process to close it in and it just wasn't happening we could not get the permit approved to do that so we ended up tearing it down and building this whole new building so this is a 30 by 50 steel building with 16 foot walls so far, we've done a lot of upgrades. We have been chipping away at this thing. We did three inch thick spray foam on all of the walls and the ceiling. We added two AC units. We did some built in shelves. We've got two, two post lifts. We've also got an air compressor with hard lines throughout the shop, a tire machine. We most recently did a little concrete pad outside the door for a hangout spot and a walkway up to the door, especially when it rains here in Florida, things get uh, muddy really quick. <laughs> Uh, and most recently, most notably, we installed this three car stacker lift from Bimpack. Now this alone was a massive improvement in the use of our floor space. You know, this shop being a 30 by 50, we have about 1500 square feet to work with, which is a good size, but when we have this many cars and this many projects and tools and equipment, it, uh, it starts to get small really quick. So we have to maximize every inch of floor space, which is why we went with 16 foot walls. We couldn't go any bigger in the perimeter, so the idea was to store upwards. This is a huge step in that direction, but it is just the start. The next and most important project we have to do is to build a loft platform here and a loft platform here. That'll allow us to get a lot of this stuff that's on the ground, taking up space, work area, and all that up and out of the way and onto the loft. That'll give us more place to put more things uh, but also more workspace overall, more space for new equipment, especially. We have some new equipment we really like to add to kind of expand our capabilities, we like to be able to do everything ourselves. Uh, we just don't really have anywhere to put it. So that being said, the loft is kind of the next natural thing that needs to get done to improve the workspace. However, there is one problem. To build the lofts, all of this stuff has to go somewhere. The problem is there's really nowhere for it to go. We're kind of at capacity. We don't really have the space to move this stuff. So before we can build the loft to put the stuff on, we've got to build a place to put the stuff to make room to build the loft. <laughs> And that is where this comes in. This is the material to build a wing to off the back of the shop. Now, this was always the plan when we did this building. That's why we installed this eight by eight bay door out in the back. You can pull a car in through here, lawnmower, tires, engine, any big bulky items can go right out the back door with ease. Now, right now there's really no nowhere for them to go. So if you come around back here, you can see we have a pretty good amount of space. We've got a lot of foliage here. It kind of acts as like a privacy fence, um, but we've got a good amount of room to that alone and really a prime spot for storing things, especially with the door there. You can see we're already storing things out here that could really stand to be covered. So this is where we're going to be building our wing to our covered storage. We actually have the roof panels 
off the old building that we tore down. We tried to save as much of the material from that as possible so it didn't go to waste. So these are gonna be perfect for this. They'll get repurposed as the roof for our new wing to. So we're gonna build it just above the door and all the way out and then pour a big concrete slab back here. We should have room for two to four cars, depending, mower, shelves, big bulky items. This should open up a lot of storage space for us uh, for all those kinds of things that don't really need to be inside, but I'd also prefer to keep them out of the weather. It rains a lot here. The sun is brutal. So if you can keep things shaded and not getting directly rained on, they last a lot longer. So that being said, we have the roof panels. We have all of our lumber to do it. We've got our assorted brackets, hardware, tools, we should have everything we need to complete this. So really there's nothing left to it but to do it. It's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be time consuming, but it'll be worth it in the end. So I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering and we're gonna get into it. So the first step was to get all of my junk out of the way so we can start building this thing. One of which being my poor lawnmower. <laughs> that thing needs some work, but it's been working. So it's like one of those things where if it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. That's the excuse I'm gonna go with at least. So <laughs> we get our ladder set up and we start removing some of the screws off of the siding because we need to put the header board right up against them. I went ahead and backfilled them with silicone so that way we don't have giant holes going into the building that water can get into we want to keep this as sealed as possible the last thing we want to do is add this nice lean tube for covered storage and then end up with water getting into the back side of the shop so once we had the area prepped we took a bunch of measurements we found our center mark you know we know that the shop is 30 feet but it's obviously not going to be exactly 30 feet and we need to cut these header boards to exactly the dimension of the shop so that our lean to is full width right to the edge of the beam so once we got them cut we went ahead and started installing them through a couple of uh, wood to the sheet metal screws so we got everything leveled out luckily we have the ribs to use to kind of keep everything level and square it made it a lot easier than it would be if this was a flat wall but we've got our header board up there we've got we've got to start all right we got our header board done came out pretty good it is on there i hung from it and uh didn't budge so these these wood to steel screws were kind of a pain to so you just i had to pre-drill and whatever but we backfilled any of the holes with silicone to seal them up uh, the board's on there, it's nice and straight, it's nice and square, so that is point A. Now we need to do point B. Point B is going to be our post frame here where our joists are going to land on. So once we get that done, then we have A, B, connect the dots. So that's what we need to do. We need to string out, measure out, and dig our footers, get our poles set, get them concreted, and then we can connect the two. So we spent a good bit of time measuring everything out to make sure that these were exactly where they need to be. The last thing we want is for this frame to be shifted one direction or the other and our whole lean to be skewed. So this is really where the, the time comes in when it comes to building something like this. You know, the physical labor of putting it all together isn't that bad. Uh, what takes a lot of time is measuring everything over and over and over again. You know, you've got to go back, you've got to check, you know, you're trying to make sure that this is square with the building, it's square with itself, everything's even. So it takes a good bit of time to get it all right. But we got everything where we wanted it. We got our holes dug. We started setting our posts down in there and getting them all cut to length. They all need to go a little bit shorter for us to accomplish the roof slope that we're looking for. And we've got posts and we've got holes. All right, footers are dug, posts are roughly set, cut to length with the laser level. So we've got that, we've got that. They're looking pretty good. I gotta go get some string, or no, I need some stakes tomorrow so we can stake this out, get everything squared up before we uh, pour our footers. All right, we've got some screws in each of the poles just to give them something to grab into the concrete with. Uh, so now we're gonna set the poles, get them all lined up, leveled, and then start pouring concrete in. Ready to do some more concrete work? Concrete professionals at this point. You ready to hand mix this whole pad? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Warming up. So before we started mixing and pouring our concrete footers in, we had one more thing to do. You guessed it, some more measuring. <laughs> As I said, this is probably the most time consuming part of building something if you want it to come out right. It's really the most important part. You know, attaching these pieces together is pretty straightforward, but getting everything exactly where it needs to be, it is time consuming and it requires some serious patience. So we're trying to square everything up, cross measuring, we're trying to get the width correct. You know, we don't want there to be a gap 
past our two by six. We don't want the two by six to not land on it or have to be angled. You know, the last thing we want is this thing to be skewed in any way. So we're taking our time, we're measuring, we're using the laser level and getting everything exactly where it needs to be, kind of holding the post in place with these stakes before we pour the concrete in. Now we'll check it and measure it and tinker with it once we pour the concrete, but the closer we can get them before we do that, the easier that'll be. All right, well, we got our tarp for our concrete, inevitable concrete spillage. We've got all of our posts leveled and squared up, as you can see. So it's time to pour our concrete footers in. We're chugging away, it's taking a little longer than we expected to get everything nicely squared up, but that's how it goes sometimes. Also, check out this shirt. Also, he's wearing that new shirt, the Garage Built Vet shirt. I love this design so much. We've got uh, this, a new sweater. I really like this, I like it all. Really like the sweater. It's a really cool design, I like that one. We've got the daily race car keychains, which are great to me, because I have one for the F80 drift car and one for the daily one. Sticker packs, and we've got some work shirts. A limited run of those. We kind of mainly got them for ourselves, but thought we might as well you know, put them on there in case anyone wants one. So. Limited run of those, if you want one of those, definitely get it sooner than later. Um, but the rest of the stuff, we got a decent amount of stock, but it's, it's, awesome. it's been cruising. And it's, yeah, it looks nice. They're nice and long. I hate short shirts. They're really, really soft. I see how the quality is. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put it through the concrete, the concrete test, which is a demolisher on clothes. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it stands after this. But I, I, they seem pretty solid. All right, we're getting back to work. So we decided to go with two bags per hole that should be plenty big enough to give us a nice strong footer. Once we pour the pad, these are going to be more or less tied into the concrete pad as well, but just so that we have something really supporting them and holding them in. In the meantime, we wanted to get these footers done nice and deep and strong with some high strength concrete. So mixing these up by hand is a little bit tiring and time consuming, but it's not too bad once you get in the rhythm and the flow of it. I'm still not sure if it's faster to do one bag and then to mix it and then put the second bag in and then mix it or to do two bags at a time we kind of bounce back and forth between each method i definitely think the uh two bags and then start mixing a method is quicker but it leads to a bit more concrete dust and you got to be real careful with this concrete dust man because this stuff it's not good for you at all. We, we should be wearing masks, but we're, we're slacking. We're outside. We've only got a few holes to do. You know, all those excuses, but the, the concrete dust is no joke. So we get our all our batches mixed up. We get them poured in. We go through and re-level everything. And now we have our concrete footers ready to go. In hindsight, we probably could have done three bags per hole, but I didn't want to overshoot it and then end up with concrete bags. They are a very difficult thing to store because they can't get rained on or anything or they're completely ruined. So I decided to play it safe. But once we were done with that, we had to wait till the next day for the concrete to set. So we moved back on to point A, the header board. I went ahead and caulked the top of this just to seal it up tight so water can't work its way back behind that board. And Josue started marking out all of our brackets and getting our end brackets on so that tomorrow we have our points for our joist hangers all you got to do is throw them up there and screw them in so as you can see it's starting to get dark pretty quick and this is the one downside for us we like to work late but you can't really work late when you run out of daylight normally we got the shop lights to keep us busy all right our posts are done they're concreted in nice and solid we've uh, compacted the dirt back in so we use our laser level here to get our static point so we can just trim them all to the exact same height. We've gotta cut, you know, half an inch here, an inch there, just to get them all perfectly even with each other. So basically, we're gonna be building the top bar for this, get that all attached. Then we're gonna put our hangers up here. And then once those are up, we can start cutting an angle in and hanging our two by sixes. Cruising right along. Connect the dots. Connect A to B. <laughs> Let's get to it. So if you follow me for any length of time, you might know that I am a bit of a tool nerd and I will take any excuse to buy a new tool. And this was a good excuse to buy this Milwaukee cordless circular saw. I had a cheap corded one because I didn't expect to use it that much. I'm not really a big fan of working out of wood. I really wanted to build this lean-to out of steel, but trying to find the right steel to use, the same kind of galvanized steel that the shop is built out of, was tricky. It's not as easy to find a supplier. 
you know, whereas for this stuff, we just literally went to Lowe's. It was all in stock, loaded up, and we're able to start on the project the next day. So the point is, I'm uh, we're working with wood a bit more now. So I finally had an excuse to buy one. So once we got the post trimmed up, Josue started working on putting the top brackets on that are going to attach the top 4x4. We had to trim the ends of them because the uh, 4x4 is going to end right square with the end of the upright post and then we could start putting our top supports on so these we had to cut down to length as well they're 16 feet our overall is 30 so we had to trim a little bit off of them to make them fit and make everything nice and even but fortunately we got it just right all right well <laughs> money in the bank shorty what you drink dude it's literally perfect yeah we'll have to do a little finagling there what? You can't even see it on camera. That's just flush, boy. Gee. Top support is on. Getting somewhere. It's always wild to see something come to shape. I love building things. If you uh, are unsure, if, if you're not in the best mood or, you know, feeling kind of stuck, just build something. Just build something. It'll make you feel better, I promise. Just feels good. Right, Josue? So now that our top 4x4 was on, it was time to get it all secured into place. We've got to attach it to the 4x4 post with those brackets, and then we have these big, beefy tie plates to tie the two pieces together. I would have loved to do this out of one piece. I thought about, you know, some different ways that we could make it to where it landed on a post, but the, the length just didn't work out right with us having the post 10 foot on center. So we just tied them together with these beefy tie plates and beefy lag screws, and I don't think that is going anywhere. So after that, so we started hanging our brackets. We put a two by six up there to check and make sure that the angle I had was correct and it was right on. So we were good to go. I could go ahead and just start hammering out these cuts, cutting a five degree angle into them. And then Josue could work on hanging up all of our joist hangers. So it's time consuming on both ends, but pretty simple. You know, we're trying to take as little off these two by sixes as possible. You know, we want the full length. I would actually have loved for these to be 18 feet because our roof panels are 18 feet. But the longest we could get was 16, so we're cutting it a little bit shorter than we want to in the beginning, in the first place. So we definitely don't want to cut any more off it. So trying to keep them consistent, get that angle in there. Josue's working on getting the brackets up, making sure they're nice and level, they're even height, so that everything is even when we go to put it together. So after we get all that sorted out and squared away, it's time to start hanging the 2 by 6s This is a big moment. This is where we connect A to V. This is where stuff really starts to come together. And it's kind of fun working on a project like this because as I mentioned, there's a lot of legwork that goes into the measuring and the squaring and the setting. And then you get to this part and the thing just flies together. It goes together so quickly once you've done the homework of getting everything where it needs to be in the first place. So the sun was setting yet again. We were running out of daylight yet again, but we were not trying to call it on this project until these were hung. So we just started hammering it out. We were tired. It was hot. The mosquitoes were biting but we're gonna get this done. We're gonna get these joists up so we can take a step back and get a real look at this thing, our first real look at what this thing's gonna look like when it's all squared away, done and dusted. Did it, got them all up there. So we still gotta do our end, basically hurricane ties. We're getting there. So tomorrow we'll uh, knock out this end and get our stringers. We're gonna change up our stringer plan. A friend of mine was advising against using the little one by two here because they like to split. So we're gonna go to a one by four, make sure they don't split. Also gives us a little more leeway for our screws. You know, it's hard to get them perfectly in a line. So yeah, tomorrow we gotta go get the one by four and then uh, we can get back to it. Get this thing finished up, but we're, we're close, we're close. All right, well. We got some daylight. It's time to get this thing finished up, fully framed up. So thought I'd give you guys a quick look at this in the daylight before we get back to it. Really happy with how this is turning out, man. I, I think we nailed it on the height and the pitch. We debated going basically up a rib or down a rib. And I think where we landed is pretty much perfect. We've got a good amount of height to build shelves up here, but it's not so tall that we can't do something that we might do later on with it. That being said, I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering. I'm gonna get back to work, start tying these in, and then we can move on. Hopefully Josue will be here soon with the stringers. We can get those in, 
call this framing done and dusted. So I started working on tying the joist to our 4x4 frame section. Now there's a couple of different ways we could have done this 4x4 frame section. We thought about using all 6x6s to make it super robust. I always prefer to overbuild things. I'd rather something be way too strong than not strong enough. But I thought the 6x6s might be a little too beefy and bulky for this project. Uh, we could have done the 6x6s and then 2x6s on each side, but we landed on this 4x4 way of doing it and I like it. I think it's a nice clean way to do it. It looks really sleek and uniform, kind of minimizes the pole size, you know, that way they're not in the way and being obnoxious. So I'm happy with it. You know, no no real regrets on the way we decided to build this thing. I think it's pretty much pretty dial for what it is and where it's going and what it's doing. Now, the one tricky thing about attaching these two by sixes is the end two by sixes. We can't use these same brackets on. So we're gonna have to get a little bit creative there, but at least these are all attached now. Let's go. Pull up. Oh man. Oh. Oh, he's strong. All right, all right. Oh. Okay, it's sturdy. I'll be way sturdier because that's what I was doing. I was flexing side to side. Uh -huh. It needs them stringers. Then it'll be uh, solid. Brackets are on. Oh, we got to do the ends. We got to decide what we want to do for the ends. Probably need to do like an L bracket, which we don't have. Yeah. So once we figured out a solution to our end two by six problem and we got those attached, now everything is attached. All of the two by sixes are attached to each end. Everything is squared up and we can finally start putting our stringers on. Now these are gonna do a few things for us. One, they're going to help square everything up. As you can see that the two by six, especially over a 16 foot span, it doesn't have a lot of lateral rigidity. It just can kind of flex in the wind, which means we're definitely not gonna be able to walk up there when it comes time to install these roof panels so this is going to add a lot more structure and just keep everything tight and in place but also it gives us a place to screw our roof panels into you know if we're trying to screw them down vertically into the two by sixes it might land on a rib or be in a weird spot so these are pretty much necessary to attach our roof panels the way we'd like to attach them and make sure all of this stuff is strong and firm and is not going anywhere so Definitely glad we made the switch to these 1x4s. I kind of tried to resist and save us a trip to the hardware store, but I tested a couple screws through the 1x2s and they just wanted to split immediately. So this was definitely the right call and it gives us basically a little more leeway for when we're screwing the roof panels in. If you're off by an inch or so, you're not gonna miss the thing entirely. There's nothing worse than screws going to nowhere. <laughs> All right, well, stringers are attached. Got five rows, basically three and a half feet on center-ish. Uh, it's three foot eight inches, but framework is done. Donnie. Say it, say it. Done and dusted. That's right. Let's get it. Looks pretty good though. Looks good. Especially when you really take a step back, you're like, that's a big old wing too. What a rig. Yeah, I think size choice was correct. I think the height choice was correct. The slope's right. What a unit. So the plan originally was to try to, you know, have room for four cars back here, but the three car stacker has made that a bit obsolete. We don't necessarily need to put four back here. So now it'll be nice to just have maybe two cars that can sit semi outside, you know, the lawn mower, maybe golf cart if we get one of those, some shelves for some outside storage bulky items so that we can get some stuff out of the container, put more stuff that needs to be weather tight in there while getting it out of here uh, and clearing space in here. So. A little bit of shuffling and moving things all all around back and forth, but uh, this is going to open up a lot of storage for us. So we still need to do the pad, we still need to paint it, we still need to put the roof panels on it. But we are out of time for this one. We are running out of daylight, we need to get tidied up. So uh, we'll pick this back up, start on the finishing touches. Like I said, we need to paint it, we need to put the roof panels on, seal everything up, and then see where we're at. Try to test it out, put some stuff under it. What do you think, Oswe? You feel satisfied? It was a very, very enjoyable project. Feeling like Bob the Builder. Right. And it's, it's up there. It's straight. Yeah. It's, it's a thing. It's doing the thing. All right. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. But I do want to say thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And then I sure hope I'll see you next time in general. But for when we finish this thing up, it should be pretty cool when it's all done and dusted. Uh, but for now, we're out of time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.